Helium is the second most abundant element in the universe, and the United States is the world's biggest producer of the lighter than air gas. Yet those who depend on helium are now in a fight to get their hands on it. Michelle Miller shows us why talk of the worst shortage in decades isn't just hot air. Inside the balloon saloon, you can find almost any kind of balloon imaginable. So we can't do any of this without helium. There's no other gas substitute. For more than 30 years, this Tribeca business has helped New Yorkers celebrate important events, from World Series parades to countless weddings and birthday parties. But owner Sharon Hershkowitz worries the good times are about to burst. We kept on getting rate increases, and my supplier was telling me, we don't know if we're going to be getting any helium. Has it ever been this bad? No, never. It's never been this bad. It's frightening. Hershkowitz isn't the only one whose access to helium is up in the air. Welders, deep sea divers, and makers of MRI machines, dirty bomb detectors, lasers, fiber optics, and computer chips, all of them need helium too. About half of the U.S. helium supply and a third of the world's comes from this dusty swath of the Texas panhandle. This is the Federal Helium Reserve outside Amarillo, operated by the Bureau of Land Management. In 1920, the, the, the government had figured out how to extract helium from natural gas. What was the use? They used uh, helium dirigibles to protect convoys of ships going across the transatlantic crossings. By 1960, the gas was so crucial to national security that Congress passed a law authorizing the federal government to purchase a hundred years worth of helium. Much of it was then stored in porous rock, 3,000 feet below the Earth's surface. Why is it underground? So the people wouldn't bomb them. Today, this area is known as the helium capital of the world. There is still enough helium here to fill 54,267 Goodyear blimps. How many of these wells are in this field? There's 23 wells that are active. Every year, the reserve puts 2 billion cubic feet of crude helium up for sale. But with helium's usefulness ever expanding, even that isn't enough to fill the growing demand. Why don't you just pull more helium out of the ground? If we could, we would. We are currently producing at maximum capacity. The problem? Private suppliers, which capture helium as a waste product of natural gas, have been unable or unwilling to increase production. If the natural gas prices are low, there really is a very little incentive to produce just the helium. Some of the new plants that were scheduled to be online are not. All of these things together are causing, I'd hate to use the term, but a perfect storm situation. And that storm could get even worse. By 1996, helium's national security importance had fizzled, while the reserve had racked up $1.3 billion in debt. So Congress passed another law to phase the government out of the helium business. What we're trying to do is to put the market the way it should be, in the hands of the industry. In October, the reserve's debt will finally be paid off. But because of the way the law is written, it may have to stop selling its helium then too, with 9 billion cubic feet still underground. For the balloon saloon, that's a deflating prospect. This is what happens. When balloons come to a party, that's when the party begins, when the balloons are up on the ceiling. If there's no helium, this is what your next party's going to look like. Does that say party to you? Does that say fun? I don't think so. Experts predict the shortage will last well into 2013, and Hershkowitz worries very little helium will be left for her business once the hospitals and high-tech companies take their share. For CBS This Morning, Michelle Miller, Amarillo, Texas.